pressure from behind. So a really good move that, wasn't it, to come charging through into sixth place by John Young. Meantime, for the race lead, Gary Pearson cannot shake off Harvey Stanley. There wasn't much to choose between these in qualifying. Remember that the interloper on the front row was courtesy of a Rob half time and back marker there in the way. That is Nick James. So through they come out of the chicane. Now is this going to it, put yep. the lead in jeopardy? Let's see, because they're going to be almost side by side as they come up towards the line. Harvey Stanley tries to go to the inside line. Gary Pearson covers him off. So Harvey Stanley to the outside now as they go into Madrid, absolutely nose to tail. So Gary Pearson is under big, big pressure now through the right-hander. Alex Brundle is watching all of this in the pit lane. And he is there nervously watching with Tom Clarkson. Absolutely. Bringing me and uh, Carlin's good. Quick word on the car. Yeah, they're all happy with it this morning. Lovely balance. So, uh, so far, so good. Let's just hope everything holds through to the end. And uh, P1's what we like to see. All right. Good luck with that, you're still in the lead. Thanks a lot. See you guys. He's still in the lead, but only just still in the lead. They've got Richard Mines coming under attack. Look for number 21, the helium Carsten LeBlanc, then 111, Oliver Bryant. Now, why is Ollie Bryant down in 12th place, Sam? That we talked about a bad start, but he's not been able to respond, has he? I think something must have gone wrong off the line. Perhaps they struggled with the clutch or something. Perhaps he's not got much use of it now. Harvey Stanley still keeping Gary, Pre Gary Pearson under huge pressure. Was that a wisp of smoke out of the back of the Stanley E-Type? Let's just have another look. It might have been tar smoke. It's getting a little bit lively, isn't it, as it comes up towards the line now. Beautiful drift down of the chicane. Harvey, relatively new to historic racing, relatively new to racing full stop, driving superbly. Great performance from half the Suave. So, Gary Pearson, another fastest lap of the race. Four tenths of a second up, he is then over Harvey Stanley. And these two just escaping. They're ten seconds to the good already over Greta Fiskin. So it's actually because after that slow start, it's given a lot of time away. It's 34 seconds behind the leading car. That's a huge amount. Yeah, Martin Halu, so we just got a shot in that glorious CFAX short wheelbase. Not really set up for circuit racing as much as it is for sort of tours and rallies. So he'll just be enjoying gracefully drifting the car around the circuit for the next 50 minutes and 48 seconds. So the leaders go across the line. The gap is 0.4 of a second between the two. And Harvey Stanley, in a sense, yes, he would like to get the race lead and see if he can pull clear of Gary Pearson. But as long as he can hand over the E-type to James Cossigan with this sort of a deficit to make up in the second stint, given that James is more experienced in historic racing terms than Alex Brundle, you could argue right now it's advantage to the 36 E-type. Could be, but it's much easier to be the hunter than the hunted. So Gary Pearson will have his mirrors full of those bright headlights, which I'm sure Harvey has turned on to full beam deliberately, just to keep Gary on his toes. Doesn't seem to be having much effect though. Gary will have seen it all before. Very poised drive. There's a few strips of tank tape on the radiator just to keep the engine temperatures up. Yeah, you're right, David. A little bit of smoke when. 36 E type, yeah. I think there's maybe the bodywork just rubbing on the inside rear of the rear wheel arch on the left hand rear corner of the car when it's under load. So, hopefully, we don't have to worry too much about that. I'm still mightily impressed by the pace these are doing because you think there's nobody else on the track. They are now 12 seconds clear of anybody else as down now towards Woodcock Corner comes this battle between Gary Pearson in the lead of the race right there behind him. It is Harvey Stanley then, and the margin between them is still no more than half a second, and it has been like this really since the race started. Now, up towards the timing line, the first 10 minutes are done, and Gary Pearson feeling the pressure very definitely. Harvey Stanley just sitting in the wheel tracks. Another lap ticked off the gap, 0.349 of a second. Another 10 minutes, and we can think about the pit window opening. Lovely driving out front from Gary Pearson here. He's picking his moment to you time. The leading duo now, Pearson still ahead of Harvey Stanley as they go through and out of the chicane. Brilliant overhead shot just a moment ago, gave us a quick illustration. Slightly different te technique, different lines between the two of them on the way into the chicane. And in fact, here as well into Madwick, Harvey Stanley likes to get a little bit wider, a little bit more over to the left on the entry. That'll straighten the car up through the exit. Conversely, on the way into the chicane, you'll see he takes a shallower, earlier turning point, making a little more of a straighter line on the approach, but pays the price on the exit. So Gary Pearson, the race leader, he did win the Kirara Trophy as he was last year, sharing with Andrew Smith in a Ferrari 250. Harvey Stanley, you can hear him from Sam Hancock, a newcomer to motor racing in general, that's why historic, but he's doing a really good job staying right on the back 
of one of the most experienced and in revival terms successful drivers here, Gary Pearson. Is he sitting there just biding his time, waiting for the pit stop, staying in touch, or is he genuinely struggling to find that last tenth? Because if he is going to get past Gary Pearson, it's a major scalp to claim. Gary knows exactly what he's doing and knows exactly how to defend. But Harvey Stanley stays right there on the tail. He's not dropping away, but he's not been darting around looking to make that overtaking. Well, they're both driving beautifully. And to me, it looks like they're both absolutely flat out. They've dropped the number one car, Gregor Piskin, who's not even in our shot anymore. So cracking pace, both of them in the low 130s. And that's a good second and a half or so advantage on raw pace alone over the closest challengers of Fiskin and Wilmot. So again, that's one, this enormous white eight-wheel type, so close to the two leaders, comes out of the chicane then. More and more that markers up the road, including that with the number nine E-type of Mark Gordon that's going to be negotiated that shortly. Together they are right under braking there because the gap right down onto the tail comes Harvey Stanley. It was two tenths of a second only when they started this lap, but now is the traffic going to get in the way? Stanley perhaps thinks about the outside line, but Gary Pearson, the pioneer, he has got to get through the traffic there. Gets past Michael Birch with the uh, Lotus Elite, the ex Peter Arundel car there is Harvey Stanley going through through water. Gary Pearson still ahead of him, but only just as they come to the right handed part. The first part of the box, and there is now this is lap 10. Well, the cards can fall either way in your favour or against when you're in second position relying on the leader to punch the hole through the traffic. On the one hand, you hope that the traffic ahead impedes the leader, gives you a little chance to chuck it up the inside, catch them unawares. On the other hand, if the traffic joins back onto the line in between the two of you and separates the two fighting cars, it's very hard to make that tie back up, particularly when they're so closely matched as Stanley now into the slipstream, closer than we've seen him yet. Having a look, Pearson goes defensive to the inside, Stanley to the outside. It's really the first time Harvey Stanley has mounted a proper bid for race honours here, and it's all over Gary Pearson like a cheap suit, isn't he? As they come now up through Woodcock Corner, the two of them together, but Gary will position the car exactly right to hang on to the lead. Less than five minutes before the pit window opens, this battle is going to go on and on and on. The more sideways of the two there out of the chicane was Harvey Stanley, but he doesn't really lose out as a consequence. He's still got the pace to stay on the tail and then dive to the outside of Gary Pearson. Wasn't really the room on the outside line. That would have been a brave, brave effort. And so Harvey Stanley slots back in behind as the cars now uh, make this run out of Magic, heading up towards Fordwater. But suddenly the complexion of this battle changes, doesn't it? Harvey Stanley looking a lot more toey. He wants to get ahead. He wants that lead. Yeah, and it looks like Pearson's having to use a bit more of the track width. Perhaps the tyre just starting to go. Right, does that give Ollie Brown a chance to challenge us? Here are the race leaders still absolutely tied together. And that gives you an idea of just how far ahead of the Oliver Bryant car they are, because they're at the end of the lap, was up the kerb and onto the dirt. There goes Harvey Stanley. Yeah, he'd have lost some momentum. He'll have to check the throttle, lift out a bit, gather the car up. Just went a little bit too wide on the throttle out of the chicane there. That's given Gary some breathing space into turn one at Madgwick. But how long for? Because he has to navigate his way past the traffic. Stanley will be tucking in behind, hoping to take advantage of Gary's hard work as he punches a hole through the back markers. So onto Ford Water they come. This is lap 13, 41 minutes of the race to go. And there is Alex Brundle getting ready. Um, oh, a big off there. That's the Lotus Elite, I'm afraid, of David Clark. And also off is the 142 Ferrari of Martin Halusa. And, and Gary Pearson is involved in all of that. The race leader with big damage. I'm afraid Alex Brundle sees the pictures. Oh, no, he says, because that is his car out of the race.